I'm John Laffey, Information Security Technical Manager at Perry Johnson Registrars. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about scoping your information security management system. For organizations who wish to implement an ISMS, determining the scope of the system is one of the first things that should be done. By determining the scope, you are effectively identifying what information and associated information assets you intend to protect. ISO 27001 specifies that you determine who the interested parties relevant to the ISMS are and what their requirements are in regards to information security. Typically, the interested parties will include clients and potential clients, as well as ownership and staff of the organization itself. In many cases, these requirements will include legislation and regulation that is applicable to your industry or to the information used by your organization and must be taken into account. Keeping these individuals and their requirements in mind will help you ensure you create the boundaries of your ISMS scope appropriately. I think an effective method to apply these requirements in order to define your scope is to first identify the data your organization works with that needs to be protected. By identifying the information that needs to be protected first, it makes it much easier to then identify the associated persons, processes, and technologies that make up the dependencies of your ISMS, such as servers, workstations, network infrastructure, departments, personnel, and physical locations that will need to be included in the scope of the ISMS. By creating a data flow that maps out the various ways the information is acquired, accessed, transmitted, and stored, it will help to clarify which departments or processes as well as physical locations need to be included. As most of the time information can freely cross traditional organizational boundaries such as divisions or physical locations. Here are some good questions to answer when determining what needs to be included in the scope of your ISMS. What information is it that we need to protect? For example, is it client's data? Is it proprietary organizational data? Is it client supply data? Is it all of your organization's data? How do we get this information? Is it internally generated by staff? Is it sent in by clients or third parties? Is it a result of the service or goods provided? Is it a record of work done? You want to identify the means and logistics of how this information comes into your organization. Who can access the data? Where is the data stored? How can the data be accessed? How and to whom is the data transmitted? By identifying the information you need to protect and following its path from the time it is created or received to the time it is archived or destroyed, it will also clarify where the interfaces and dependencies exist between activities performed by your organization and those performed by third parties. If you are unsure if the scope of your ISMS needs to include all divisions of your organization or office, it is important to keep in mind that any out-of-scope elements will need to be treated the same as a third party, regardless of it being part of your organization. By performing this exercise, it should hopefully make it easier to determine if the scope needs to include more people and processes than initially planned. Thank you for watching. If you would like further information about becoming ISO 27001 certified, please visit us at www.pjr.com or call us at 1-800-800-7910 and we would be happy to answer any questions you may have.